Hello and welcome to the final tutorial in the Cocos 2DX multi device tutorial series. This is also tutorial 5 and like I mentioned it is the final tutorial. If you follow this tutorial and the previous tutorials you should be all good to go for creating multi device games that they run on iOS, Android and even Windows Phone if you want to. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to implement an example scene. So it's going to open up our project in Xcode. First of all, I'm just going to run it in the iPhone simulator. What we just want to show you first of all is this Hello World label that's been added and it's been added, added sorry, with a font size of 24. And what you'll see is on a regular iPhone or a non retina iPhone, it looks okay but when you start going into higher resolution devices it's still retaining the same size in terms of say pixels so it looks a lot smaller but we obviously want it to scale up look, look the same essentially on the different devices I'm just going to show you how to implement some code to do that but first it will just show you what it looks like Here we go, we got Hello World, it looks pretty good, it looks okay. But what we're going to do is load up the iPad Retina, so this is the stream situation on the other side of the scale. As you see, it doesn't even completely fit on my screen uh, with this resolution of 1600 by 900. But I can scroll using the mouse, so it's alright. And if we just scroll, we got the background, then we got Hello World. As you see, it's like ridiculously small. That is not what we want. So if we go back to Xcode, the way to do this, there's not actually, as far as I'm aware, any particular way. This is just a formula that we've just come up with. And it works well. Uh, if you do visible size, which is declared up here, obviously, if it's named different, then you put a different name here, dot width. You can do it to height as well, but just make sure you always do it width or height. We're just going to stick with width for now. Divide by 1920. 1920 is essentially just a magic number. We are going to mention later on, don't use magic numbers. There's like the odd situation where you will. And even this, you could probably put this as a hash defined somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is just a number that we've come to 1920 so basically you know like 1920 by 1080 that works well and then it's going to do times by 72 and this number is the number that you will change based on the size so you can think of this as the font size so this is just a little formula and you keep this the same so you could probably even put this as a hash define as well and uh, whereas this is the actual font size so if we now just run this As you can see, it looks a lot better uh, in relation to the iPad HD background. What we're going to do is run it on a non retro iPhone to show you how well it looks as well. Because it looks bigger on the Retina iPhone if we did just send it to uh, using the previous code that sent it to on its own, it would look ridiculously huge. Whereas what you'll see is, is hopefully that it looks pretty good. As you can see, it looks relative to the screen size. So if we just find this load up iPhone Retina, and so this iPhone 5 and 5S. Talking about iOS devices, pretty disappointed with WWDC yesterday, but yeah, that's a topic for another day. As you can see, it looks good on here as well. So for labels or font in general, this is what you should do, or something similar, experiment with it, whatever suits you, but this is what we find works well, we've got published games with it and it works well on Android. Next thing we want to look at is background, but as you can see and all on the other devices, the background is centered, that's what we want to say, just 
you're pretty much always going to want your background centered. So instead of, let's say, on a regular iPhone, landscape mode is 480 by 320. So instead of doing 240 by 160, which will be centered, assuming in the default anchor point of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on your node, you would put visible size dot width divided by 2. A visible size dot width, uh, no, no, sorry, that's the closed item. Um, let me find the yes, spray here. Visible size dot width divided by two, visible size dot height divided by two, and yeah, add in origin dot y and origin dot x. So yeah, just use stuff like this so you'll work well on all devices. It sounds like obvious stuff, but sometimes you may not do this. Also, even though I may say I will say don't use magic numbers and make sure you make it dynamic, when you're testing, it may just be a little easier to use a few magic numbers or put explicit value. That is fine. But the problem because when you don't change it, when you forget, just make sure you change it dynamically because obviously if there's a big algorithm for it, it's going to take a while to implement. You may not want to implement it like that. You just want to see if it runs on that one device first. The next thing when I look at is the pause button or just a button in general. I can see we've got a button here. And if we look at the close item, there's no visible size dot width. So it's positioned all the way to the right and they've done close item get content size that with divide by two that is because the anchor point is in the middle if they didn't minus that it, it would basically be centered around about there and as you saw on all the different devices and if you run it yourself it looks good because it's all dynamic there's no magic numbers and divide by two is just getting like half of it so you could do a hash define for that but you don't really need to this is what, we, what we're trying to iterate. Make it dynamic, so it works well on all devices. We want it to be in the bottom right, it's going to be in the bottom right, based on this code. We want it to be in the top left, but as some pause buttons are, you put it in the top left. So, next thing is, similar to the sprite and the menu item, if you're creating an actual game, so you have a player, and you want him to be centered to the left here, so basically a quarter of the way in. Again, don't use pixel value. You use visible size that width divided by four. Uh, and then for the height for the height or the y position, you do visible size the height divided by two. So if you want it to be positioned round about there. Same with let's say if you have some enemies and you want two enemies, so one there and one there, you could do visible size dot width divided by four, and then you could like, times that by two. I mean times by three, sorry, because two would end up here. Three, so you'll end up 75% of the way through. And then you could do a visible size dot height divided by four. And then you could do, let's say, times by one, times by three, etc. And then the next thing is, again, just to iterate, don't use magic numbers. So, I'll give you an example. So we have this close item. And we are going to put... I'm going to put 400 I'm going to put 400 by about 40 mm. Oh yeah, semicolon I mean bracket So if we do 400 by 40 and now we show you how this runs on a regular iPhone. Okay, so it's sort of positioned in the bottom right and it looks okay. But if we put this on an iPhone Retina, this will be positioned in the width about halfway, and it works. It's not much up. It's, it's actually sort of going in, and this is because it's not dynamic. What we've done, we've just put explicit values, and yeah, it worked okay with the regular iPhone, but not everyone uses a regular iPhone. Not many people at all, or but even if they did, they have different devices. It's it's not like the PS Vita where there's just one resolution which is really cool about Vita. And so yeah, you make it dynamic. You don't use any magic numbers. You do like visible size dot width, you minus 
the half the width of the clothes item so it's positioned correctly every single time and then you add the origin.x and origin.y to make sure it's positioned correctly on the different devices so to, so to go recap what we did in this tutorial showed you how to do correct label sites so it works on the different devices and make sure you always center your backgrounds like this when you create some sort of hood or something that's positioned sort of like in the corner or anywhere really use dynamic positioning and for dynamic sizing as well when you size in stuff as well and when you're moving stuff scaling stuff etc etc also when you're moving stuff around the scene don't just move it for example if every frame you want to move it a pixel one pixel at 60 frames per second on an iPhone will look a lot faster than one pixel 60 frames per second on an iPad Retina because there's more pixels than an iPad Retina so you look like it's moving slower across the screen you want to factor in the screen size as well so you, what you could do is like the screen size dot width times by your speed value uh, etc again you've got experiments for your game specifically there, there won't be like one ultimate solution but if you follow these steps you should be all good also yeah like, like we're saying when you place in different items such as a player an enemy and other objects within the game use dynamic positioning no magic numbers and just again make it dynamic that's it for this tutorial and this tutorial series in general but if you have any questions you can email us at support at sonarsystem.co.uk the email will be in the, in the description also you can comment on this video directly message us via YouTube plus there will be a link in the source code to the oh, yeah a link in the description sorry to the source code that we used as a base book so we haven't really added anything there won't be any source code from this tutorial and like I said if you have any questions feel free to message us we'll be creating more Code Plus 2DX tutorials as well and as usual thanks for watching and have a nice day